Hello friends and welcome. I'm Sarah Liz and I have a wicked fun card project to share with you today. This is like a display piece card. It lights up. Here it is with the lights off. I love the glow of the Emerald City. And on the inside, I've made a little door so you can get to the battery and replace it if it dies. So you never have to worry about this card not being able to light up anymore. So I'm using a bunch of supplies today, but I'll walk you through things you can substitute along the way. I have the fresh picked labels and the essential modern ovals from Spellbinders, just basic shape dies. Then I have the Good Morning Sunshine stencils from Trinity Stamps. These are huge. It's a nine by six inch set of stencils. Then I'm bringing in the Merry and Bright from Trinity Stamps as well. We're just gonna steal those little sparkles in the background the Witch in Heels, which is just a silhouette of a witch, though there is a hat and some shoes if you wanted to do ruby slippers. I'm stealing these little hill dies from the large day of the month from Spellbinders for September. For our sentiment, I made some specialty sentiments. So these will come out as a free printable on my channel on the 18th. You can find me at Sassy's LLC, and I will show you how I'm using them in this video, but there will be more inspiration coming later. And of course, the star of the show is the easy light. This is a button, a battery, and three lights. So I'm starting with a piece of cardstock that measures five and three eighths by six and a quarter, but actually I didn't measure it real well. So we're gonna end up having to cut it down later. That's totally fine. I'm ink blending on a sort of light-ish green with a medium green. And then I'm gonna pull in a darker green here too. I'm using the Spellbinders large blending brushes. They have a really soft bristle. And so I can get these sort of darker moments and then fade into nothing pretty easily. Once I get those two layers of green on there, I'm gonna bring in my stencil and I'm just kind of centering it. This is gonna be like the glowing rays of magic light coming out from behind the city. And so I'm making sure as I'm bringing in that medium green ink that I am going with the grain of the stencil. I did have to switch about halfway through to use a stronger tape. I was using mint tape, um, but there's already ink on that panel. So I switched to the Spellbinders uh, World's Best Craft Tape. It's just a little bit stickier, works better on a slightly damp surface. When I bring in the second stencil, there are etched lines that will line up with the rays we've already made. I started with a green cardstock because there are parts of this that don't get stenciled. It doesn't cover the entire area. I'm not too worried that it's a little splotchy in the middle bottom. That's gonna get covered up by our city, but I do want it kind of darker towards the middle and then lighter as we're spreading outward. And so I'm not even going all the way up sometimes. Again, these really soft bristles on this brush are super helpful for that. For a little extra magic, I'm gonna spray this with two different sprays. This is the Sukuneko Shimmer Spritz, and it's just a really fine, like, sparkle layer. And then I've used the Wicked Elixir Distress Mica Stain as well. So this die set is the Witch in Heels from Spellbinders, and the minute I saw it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I played around with a couple options of how to add her to my city, because she's large, right? She will fill an A2 card front. And so our card is actually very big. It's a five and a quarter by seven and a half. And I am not worried about that. This is gonna be a hand deliver for sure. She is gonna rest kind of on top of the city. And so I stacked it up too deep and I want some green on her as well. So these are my Ohuhu acrylic paint pens. These are kind of new to me, but I've been very happy with them. And I am just tracing on her face like a little swoopy of some hair coming down uh, and then where the rounded neckline of her dress will be. There are four greens in this set, but I have chosen the metallic mint and it is the perfect wicked color. And I have two choices for the nib on my paint pen. So there's a bullet tip on one side and then this is like a fine pen tip I could write with this or draw with this or make little like dots for animal critter eyes, but it also spreads like paint. It stays wet for just a little bit. And so it worked beautifully here and I can get into those small spaces. So I'm just gonna do her face and neck and then her arms as they're reaching down to the broom. Uh, and then I'll, I'll leave it like that. You could even skip her arms on this, I think, 
For the most part, her costumes don't show her arms anyway, but I thought it was fun to add that extra touch of green. Next, I'm using the Essential Modern Ovals to create my Emerald City. I need a piece of cardstock about five and a half inches long, and we're gonna do some partial die cutting. So I'm lining up the bottoms of these on the same level, um, and then the tops are ever so slightly staggered. I have my back plate, acrylic plate, and then I have my middle plates, my magnetic plates, and I have about an inch where it's hanging off the end because I don't wanna cut there. I'm gonna put my top plate somewhere in between because I don't wanna create a strong like crease mark where that plate hits it when it runs through my machine. So here I have the tops of these cut into my cardstock. I'm gonna cut this down to about six inches, five and a half inches. And then I just gently press to line up the edge of that die cut on the blade of my trimmer. And then I can cut out my little strips. The dies just weren't long enough to create those buildings that I want. <laughs> this might have been the hard way to do it. You could also just use a corner rounder, my friends. That's kind of what this looks like. I tried that at first, but my corner rounder is a little too much. And so on the smallest ones that are about a half inch, um, it was doing weird things to the top. But try your corner rounder if you're like, girl, I'm not partial die cutting, totally fine. I have some fake plant lunar paste and I'm just using a domed foam applicator and coloring those up. I did not color them before I die cut because it was putting a really strong crease into my die cuts even when I was really careful with my plate placement. By the time I was done with the last one, the first one was dry and I'm bringing in that Wicked Elixir again and I am just dotting it on top. I made sure to shake it up first because I want that mica in there and you can see how it creates this sort of shine and luminescence. The lunar paste has shine, but not that level of sparkle and they're slightly different shades of green. I'm not taking a lot of care here. I'm using the same domed foam applicator. I'll rinse it out when I'm done. I'll be able to use it again. Next, I need to cut a hole or a frame into my background. This is the largest of the fresh picked labels and tags. It's basically an A2. So I've put it onto a five and a quarter by seven and a half inch piece of cardstock and I'll tape it in place so it doesn't move even though I have a magnetic plate. You can see I have more room at the bottom than at the top because I'm gonna put my sentiment down at the bottom. I wanted some shine so I'm taking my Delicata black shimmer ink and I just went like direct to paper for a lot of it but there are some places that were hard to get because I have some delicate sides uh, and because my ink pad needs to be re -inked. So I did come in, I have a blending brush just for this ink. That's how often I use it. It just adds incredible shine and it is still quite dark. You're catching it in the light of my studio lights, but seriously, like an amazing black for any of your fall holidays. So I cut another one from some white cardstock just so I had something to play with and I didn't have to put tape on top of that shimmer ink. And I'm gonna start lining up my pieces. I essentially have three sizes. They're about one inch, three quarters of an inch and a half inch. And I'm just staggering them, right? Um, I don't have necessarily a plan. I know I want some of the smaller ones in the front. I know I only want one of the largest, that one inch, because that's gonna be in the middle. And I just had a lot of fun with this. I did a deep dive into YouTube, re-watching some of my favorite songs with the clips from the stage show. I was watching clips from the movie that's coming out, I think around Thanksgiving. In the movie, they show the Emerald City with like a witch's hat kind of built into it. But this is more, I think, the classic look um, of that city. And I'm very happy with that. So I put some mint tape over the front once I had my placement right and then a little bit on the bottom and I'm gonna carefully remove that. Two of those pieces aren't touching any tape. So I'm gonna add a little bit of tape to the back of it as well and then I'll just set it aside. We're gonna work on the placement of our easy light so we can make our little door to replace the battery later if we need to. Okay, so I'm actually gonna install that pack upside down. I'm placing it in the bottom right-hand corner of my card base and making two little pencil marks above and to the left of it. I'm gonna bring it into my trimmer. This is a sliding blade trimmer. So I'm only gonna cut like an inch, inch and a quarter. Um, 
And then I'll take that to my scoreboard. So I cut one little piece and then I'm gonna create a score line. I'm being really picky and very deliberate in my cut and my score line, but you wouldn't have to be, right? If you aren't really comfortable with a pair of scissors, just cut that by hand and then fold it. It's not a big deal. Um, but this is a way if you're worried about what it will look like on the inside for it to still look really nice. I'm gonna glue this piece right onto the card base, but I wanna make sure I don't have two layers of card stock where that door is. So I just use a pencil to mark where I need to remove a little bit of that background. I have kind of a swoop down to a point in the middle front, so you're not gonna see that at all once the card is assembled. I'll use my wet glue, and I've actually cut this a little smaller than my card base. I don't want green kind of visible along the outside. Even my foam tape, I'm gonna color black. I just think it is one of those finishing details that can really elevate a card. These two dies came from the large die of the month from Spellbinders for August. It has this really great like barn farm scene um, and you can create a road and some hills. So I stole the hills, but you could cut those by hand, my friends. <laughs> You don't need to use those dies. They just happened to be out because I was making cards for that too. And then I'm going to freehand cut just two little crescents, swoopies, uh, from some yellow cardstock. There are dies in that large die of the month that you could do this with, but this was faster. It's a really dark road. So I went over that with my black blending tool. It's probably got black soot ink on it, but I didn't even re-ink it. I just wanted to take a little bit of the brightness away. And then I'll have one curving towards the right and one curving towards the left and they will overlap a little bit. I've got those two layers of black cardstock hills and I'm just gluing them down with wet glue. I do want this one as I glue it down to overlap the top of the hill. So I'm being really careful. There is glue on the whole thing, but I'm laying it down gently and then I'll clip that little bit off of the top. Um, I went round and round with like, should I try to create some bricks for the road or some kind of like cobblestone looking something? Should I make it gold and glittery? But really the road isn't the point, right? So I just kept this really simple and then I want them to end sort of right in the middle of the city. It is the road leading up to the city. Once I know the roads are aligned, I'm just gonna take my glue bottle and stick that fine tip right inside of there and add some glue and I'll do the same on the back. That's easy enough. Normally then I would add this to my panel and I would be really careful as I'm trimming it on the left and the right and on the bottom. Um, I'm not gonna be and I'm gonna regret that later. <laughs> but for now, we'll just stick the tip of the glue bottle under there, glue it down. I'm just, this is the easiest way um, I could think of to make sure everything stayed lined up. And actually this part is fine, right? I'm adding all my glue, but here I go. And I just take my scissors and I'm like, it's gonna be hidden, no one's gonna see it but I have that little trap door for our battery. And so part of this, you will see, and it's a hot mess. So I'm gonna cover that up later. Uh, and I haven't reinforced that panel. It's 100 pound cardstock, but it's a really big card. So later on, we'll add some supports before we add our foam tape. I'm getting everything lined up in the window, and then I'm gonna draw a line on my little green strips right along the bottom. And then while those are taped together, I'm gonna to trim that down. And I'm actually trimming a little bit inside of that pencil line because again, I don't want green kind of peeking out from behind things. I stole these little twinkling bits from the Merry and Bright. It's a small little die set, but you know what? I have used that thing a ton. If you don't have a die set like that, then just use like a silver gel pen, that would work or there's a silver paint pen in that Ohuhu acrylic marker pack that I got that would also work beautifully. I tell you what, I hemmed and hawed about whether I should use twinkle lights to light up some of these little pieces or if I should use easy lights to create light from behind the city. And I went back and forth. I thought about it for days. So you'll have to let me know what you think. Do you like it with the lights behind the city or would you put lights behind a couple of these twinkling stars. I've got them around the outside of our pillars, but some of them are going to be right underneath those pillars or right underneath uh, sort of the frame of the card. I like how it makes it feel like the scene keeps going 
instead of like, I just filled in this one tidy little space. I don't think magic does that. <laughs> so this is how I did it. Um, I am using a combination of my pickup stick and then some tweezers. And actually I had some extras. This was super great because I could just slide one out of the way and put the glued one in its spot. Otherwise, by the time I pick it up and put glue on it, I don't remember where it was. I don't know about you guys, but that's, that's the age that I am. That's how things are going these days. So I wanna remove the tape from the back so I can glue just two pillars straight to the back of the card. I didn't remove all of the tape because I wanna know where it goes. I'm lining it up just a little bit up from the bottom. There is still a piece of tape back there. We'll get rid of it in a minute. I'm putting the frame over the top to check it. And then before I remove the big piece, I'm gonna mark the sides so I know where that goes. Then I can gently remove that mint tape. It's like post-it tape if you haven't used it before. Um, and it's really easy and I can tack down those final two pieces. Here is my easy light. Really simple, I just stick the battery in that battery pack, push the button and they light up. That's it. Next, we're gonna add our easy lights and I'll explain the foam tape in a minute. But I want lights between these three middle pillars. So I'm using a pen to mark where I want the lights to go. They're gonna be about a quarter inch below the top. The foam tape doesn't go up any higher than that and I had to be really careful when I was adding it. I like to add these on with scotch tape and I'm using tiny little pieces at first, just right over top of the light and I'm making sure the yellow part is facing upward. That's the actual light. And then this way, if I use small pieces and I don't press too hard, I can actually peel that back up if I decide that my light is not quite in the right place. And typically if I'm gentle, my background is gonna be just fine. So I've taped my three lights on there and I'm gonna hold my pillars on top and I can see the lights are looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure down my wires. I like to very gently just sort of wrap them into a coil and then I'll tape them down. There's gonna be foam tape there before we're done. I have my battery pack in the bottom right hand corner and I'm just gonna leave it hanging there for now. I have removed the foam tape from the back of three of the pillars. It is a single layer of Waffle Flowers thinnest black foam tape. Then the front two pillars that still have the backing paper on them, they have a double thick layer of that. Even that double thick layer is not as thick as the pear blossom tape. So in theory, everything should fit just fine in my frame once I use Pear Blossom's world's best foam tape, the double thick, and it's gonna be great. So here, I'm taking this one off once the other three are definitely secured down. I'm checking my lights over and over, right? And once I'm confident, I'll remove the backing paper and then I can fit that right back in there like a puzzle piece. You can see that even when I press down on the battery pack when it's upside down, so I'm not quite on the button, the lights work brilliantly. I saw Cassie Trask do this on the Pear Blossom channel. She's a genius. I love it. With the pillars taped down, now is the perfect time to add some double stick tape to the back of that battery pack. Before I add my frame, however, I added a bunch of supports. I just layered up some black cardstock, about three thick, for two reasons. One for support of the frame, but another because on two of those pillars, I put so much foam tape that even with the double thick tape, it was maybe a little too thick. So be aware of that, be careful of your tape. A couple extra layers of cardstock totally solved that problem. Here, I am adding my world's best foam tape from Pear Blossom, and I used a black marker, just an alcohol marker, right along the edges, you could use a Sharpie, to make that black too, so I don't have this white glaring out from the sides. Then I lost some footage. So here is what it looked like. I have my finished card on the right, and then here's where I put all my foam tape. It goes around the sides and top, but I've left it empty in the middle where the pillars are, and then on what will be the right-hand side where my battery is, okay? And I laid that right over the top. And my favorite part is that because it is the world's best foam tape, it's repositionable for 30 minutes. So I could take that right off that panel and put it back on my roll. 
When I put that panel on there, I just opened the flap inside of my card and added that double stick tape behind my battery pack, secured it to the front panel, and added a little bit of removable adhesive right over the flap, and that hides it. Like, unless you're really looking for it, you don't notice it, and I love that. Our sentiment today comes from a free printable that I release on my channel. There are five of them this month, and it's the Wicked Fun Sentiment. And I want this black on black sentiment. Everyone deserves a chance to fly. And so what I did was to print it out in white, and then I colored in some mint tape with a black marker and kind of put it over the top of the letters. I'm going to put this through my scan and cut and it doesn't recognize sentiments as a single object. So just a little bit of tape over the top and it will cut all of that out with a single bubble around it. Then I will use that outline, set it right over the top of the black on black panel that my scan and cut cannot read. <laughs> like It can barely read the right one, friends. Mine is very old, but I will scan it with that white piece on top and I can easily remove it before I actually have it cut and I get this perfectly cut black on black sentiment. I'm gonna foil this. So I have my mini mink and then I have essentially an A2 card base with heavy weight cardstock. It's really important for me anyway. I'm gonna brush off my sentiment to make sure there isn't any dust on there. And then this is transfer foil. It's not the same as glimmer foil. Glimmer foil has adhesive built into it this does not. I am going to put this into my cardstock. I'm on heat level four and I'm going to run that through my machine. I sped it way up so you don't have to sit there and watch paper move. That toner is like little bits of plastic and as it melts in the heat, the foil sticks to it. And then when it cools, you can remove the foil and your sentiment is beautifully foiled. If you don't have a mink machine like I do, you can try it with a laminator. Just let it preheat for like 20 or 30 minutes so it's really, really hot. I'm going to go ahead and attach my witch to my background. I'm just checking. I don't want her to cover up too much of those lights. And so once I get her where I want her, I'm going to add glue right behind her. I've switched to Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. I think it just grabs a little faster and I was worried about her sliding around because that surface is a little slick. Then I'm adding my sentiment. Also in the footage I lost, I stacked that up a couple times. Once I cut out the sentiment, I can run it back through my scan and cut with another piece of cardstock right where that had been, and it will cut the same shape. So that finishes up our card for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. I am absolutely in love. I'll have more Wicked inspiration over on my channel later in the month. The kit will release on the 18th of September. I just love the idea for light up cards. Anytime there is magic involved, there's lots of opportunity for easy lights and halo lights and twinkle lights, all the things. If you've enjoyed this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure to come back for more inspiration. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time.